You're tuned in to season two of Save That Podcast right now, and we really appreciate you being here. If you want to go back and relive season one, we put an album up of our favorite tracks. It's on savethat.bandcamp.com. You can go listen to that or buy that right now. Either way, we love you for it, so go do that. We got a really big announcement today as well. We're doing our first live show. It's going to be at Grow House Method in Nashville. That's happening on April 13th. And we hope that you can make or find the time to be there. It's going to be a really good time. We got Cloud Colony. We got Snake Cheney in a really rare performance. We got your boy Malaku. It's going to be an absolute party. We will serve you drinks. Aaron will tell your fortune. It's going to be a madhouse. Be there or don't. But if you're not, don't complain that you didn't make it. So uh, check that out. We got all the information on our Instagram and our Facebook. We also want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends over at gnarls.com. Gnarls is a music licensing platform with unlimited music for content creators, and it's sourced and recommended for your project specifically by professional music supervisors. If you're looking for new music for your next project, whether that's an album or maybe a podcast or maybe a film you're making, you can go check out their website and get a two-week free trial. If you're an artist and you'd like to get involved, drop us a line at savethatpodcast at gmail.com. We'll make sure it gets to the right folks. On this very special episode, we have returning friend, Shay Trammell. He's here to bring us closer to the roots of reggae. He's going to tell us a little bit about the history. He's going to show us why he cares about it, what it means to him, and uh, why it should mean something to you. Or, or not, you can be heartless. It's cool. You can still listen to us. We love you. Hey. For listening to Save That Podcast. This show is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Stay tuned for the track at the end of the episode. Now, without further ado, let's get this shit show rolling. Apologize for any audio disruptions in this week's episode. We need money. Welcome to the Drums in Space segment of Save That Podcast. What lies in the great beyond? <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to, s- to Save That Podcast. Drums and Space. Drums the podcast. Space, the podcast. Where we take you on cosmic adventures every week with our dear friends and musical guests. Hey, Will, you're giving me the angs. I want you to imagine a planet. A planet much like our own, far off in the distance. Um, maybe there's life on this planet. Maybe people you know. Clones of yourself. This is my Carl Sagan voice. Welcome to Save That Podcast. <laughs> What's going on, Shay? Yeah. Good to have you back, man. It's good to be back, guys. As, as myself and not a psychotic murderer or Dylan. Yeah. Some of you guys might remember Shay from uh, the episode where he killed us. And then he performed ritual magic to bring us back mm-hmm. so that we could do this episode, which is his true passion, which is mm-hmm. reggae music. I know that the intro was a little bit confusing because we started off with a... a you know, so a like space we're sending, theme. We're sending mixed messages today. A lot of mixed messages. We mixed... wanted to make sure everyone came in on like a relaxed, calm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice and no need to get all excited up from the get go. It's a long ride, you know. Come in comfortable. Get in there. Put on your your fancy, comfortable seatbelt that I hope you have attached to your chair and buckle up, buckaroos, because we got a big fun podcast for you today with lots of fun stuff. <laughs> we're gonna talk about reggae music. We're gonna make some reggae music. Um, we're going to talk about Shay's reggae music. Yeah. Specifically, Shay's music. Uh, so you have 
how long have you been doing this? How long have you been working on reggae? Well, I'd first uh, I'd first start just with music. I played music my whole life. Um, yeah. Like I come from a musical family. My dad is a musician. Uh, his sister and his parents were were all really musical, and uh, I got the bug. Um, when I was young, I started out with drums, which I believe is like the foundation of all music. And uh, over time, I learned guitar, and then after that was bass, and I taught myself piano, and uh, most recently, like uh, singing uh, around the start of high school. Um, I wrote a lot of songs. I didn't finish a lot of songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that's naturally just because I, I never felt like I knew what I was supposed to create. I always liked to create and could create, but I never knew like what was my thing. And um, about four years ago, just through a bunch of different experiences, I, uh, you know, I was listening to reggae. I'd always listened to it, of course, like Legend. Uh, it was Bob Marley. Legend was really the only like extensive thing I've ever really listened to in that category. Mm-hmm. And I started branching out, and it had such a a spiritual impact in my life, a physical impact in my life, uh, and the rabbit hole is just ever, ever, ever deepening of understanding it. Um, I, I have a basic knowledge of the history of it and how it started, but man, it's it's definitely going to be a journey that's gonna it's gonna take a long, 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 long time. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's gonna take a long time, and that's why I feel like uh, I've come to the conclusion to answer your question that like reggae music is is something that I can stick around with for a while because it's it it would take many lifetimes the rest of my lifetime to to listen to all of it there's a lot of it out there to listen to a lot of it out there to study and i think it's important to clarify for people that don't know shay that he's extremely capable of playing whatever kind of music he wants to play yeah so he's this isn't him saying like reggae is the only music he listens to or cares about it's just that he's taking the i appreciate the the plunge into that realm i'm really bad about talking that i should i should have specified i uh (laughs) i've i can make like I've made like every genre of music. I've yeah, made, why don't you play a little chord progression? I've made electronic. <laughs> uh, I've made electronic music um, for with Ben. Um, well, the the style that for, you frequently hear time. on the show, like the kind of spacey lo-fi. Yeah, just uh, like jazz piano just became a way to express how, not how I feel, but how the world makes you feel when you're somewhere and you are receiving that message from the world, I, I can express that um, very well through piano. So piano has become like my focal instrument. And mm. uh, yeah, like, like he was saying, through that I've written jazz music, I've uh, written like, you know, like adult contemporary in the style of the 70s. I've, I've done like uh, my own kind of acoustic stuff that combines world music and other things, but nothing ever really clicked like reggae music. Like I couldn't finish songs, now I have like a lot of songs. I mean, I started like I can write a bunch. Whereas before, I mean, I mean, you're looking at spans of six and seven years. Like I couldn't finish a song. A lot of great ideas. A lot of great ideas. A lot yeah. of, but it was all making cool sounding music. Like I, that is just like free and creative. Like I could never settle on an idea because I love the moment of creating so much. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? It was really hard for me to settle on a set chord progression. But with reggae music. Um, because of the form and paying the attention to detail in the form and, and the spiritual aspect of it, it uh, the music it makes music music again. The music is just a, a chariot for the for the message. You know yeah. what I mean? And and right. uh, it, it's 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 fun to experiment and to push the boundaries of how well you can pass that message along to people. But it, you know, in my heart, I believe that it it is a, a set thing. You know, because there's a lot of great reggae out nowadays. But in my opinion, it, it doesn't sound like 99% of recorded reggae music. I understand that it was a different time and, you know, the 70s and all that. I mean, reggae kept going, you know, but there is a specific sound that I, I feel like it has to have, um, which right. is why I enjoy to make it. It's, it's a challenge. It's a, it's a challenge to recreate it. Um, I think and so what you're saying is Shaggy isn't what you would consider. Man, no, you have to understand, <laughs> dude. Shaggy has this place. And you come to realize that, you know, when I first started this, I remember listening to stuff uh, like Sugar Minot, like way later after he did all his lovers rock and everything. Uh, he, you know, he's doing like Herb Man Hustling. It's a song. It's like dance hall, mm-hmm. and you got these guys that are great singers and you know doing all this stuff, and then and, and then they kind of take on that like I mean dance hall. It has its. You just have to understand the context of like the place, and I mean that's like street culture almost. Like you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and, 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 and 
it almost sounds so silly because of the context of the times. Like we look back on our expressions in the nineties and stuff like, you know, yo, like what's happening and all that, you know, like hip talk. I mean, there was a, it was a pretty poppin' scene. It had a lot of, I mean, dance halls, like that's a whole other, it is reggae, but that's like a whole other thing yeah. in itself. I mean, at the G's, like that really brought reggae music from you have a band to now it's, uh, I mean, you sometimes do have a band, but like you have a DJ that's like pulling samples from, like all these happening tracks and just like recycling them and then and then that was like their version of hip hop you know and yeah like, like uh each guy could come on and and toast and and do their thing and um yeah that was i think if I'm, my information is correct like i said like it's it's always going to be like a work in process learning about it but the, as far as i can dig back rapper robert i think was the first dude like 72 i really hope this isn't wrong i hope there's not reggae heads listening to me going that's wrong um <laughs> uh yeah i'm pretty sure he was the first dude to come out and do the toasting you know um Just that, like you know, toasting and that rhythm, right. and uh, you know, the y Yellow Man, all those, all those guys you guys are familiar with. That yeah. whole style really developed out of, um, yeah, all that stuff in the '70s. It's all still there. It's just got like a, a in the '80s, it took on this, you know, like you know, yeah. instead of that, you know, it was more yeah. like a like a, a hip hop slower. backbeat. You know what I yeah. mean? Just that, just. Yeah. Chin, 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 you know, and that yeah. really opened it up, you know, because it's drum and bass. Like, reggae is, like, you know, in, in Jamaica, it's ghetto music. Like, you know, it's, what? you put it on the sound systems, man, and, like, you know, you can hear it, bro, like, down yeah. the street, like, just I think it cranking. would be good to take, like, a, a step back a little bit at a, like, from a higher level. Like, what, where did reggae music come from? And as, as succinctly as you can, I know that that's yeah. a whole can of worms, and that's a really big topic to mm -hmm. kind of handle in a couple seconds. But definitely, where did, where did reggae music come from and what defines reggae music what in your mind makes reggae reggae and and I, I think that you probably have some interesting insight into that cool uh man so like i guess the easiest way i could put it like 1960s jamaica right uh uh you had like a bunch of stuff before that like minto jazz uh blues and rb um just that came together and through like bass and drum driven tracks like uh I, I, I don't know just like the the island music i don't know when it started mm -hmm. feeling like that but island music has always had that that vibe and you can hear it with like calypso and you know people grew up listening to calypso and then you know they grew up listening to mento and then you know they're a little bit older and then they hear jazz and then all this motown is coming down from america and stuff and then i it just as far as i'm concerned like it just kind of came together there was a lot of ska and like pre-reggae stuff you know aaron knows a lot about the ska stuff um yeah and then eventually it just started getting slower and started getting political and spiritual and it kind of made us transition from island music to like reggae and i think i think it was toots and the maytals uh they did do the reggae which is like the first time and things like 67 that somebody used the word reggae and i think from what i read uh -huh. like, streggae you say, like, you know, hey, they look strega, they don't look right. Like, they're not dressed. You can use it for guys and girls. So it's just, like, I don't know. Like, strega, dude started saying reggae, and they said do the reggae, and they made a track, and it's reggae music. Started That's with crazy. That jink, 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 you know? And, I mean, Toots and the Maytals, they're a great group, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Definitely look them up. But, man, it's just, uh, it's created, it just created a whirlwind of just, oh, my God, just, like, offshoots and subgenres, and, I mean, Believe it or not, folks, like dubstep, like yeah. you can, yeah, like dude. Skrillex, dude, like Rusko. you go, yeah, like oh my god, like you know, and making, that's where the name comes from, and I making mean. all that stuff, like connecting all those dots. It's it's really strange. There's a, it's a, and we're going to talk about that too. It's a pretty broad term, but at the same time, it's not, you know. And I I, I don't know. It, it's a it's a really crazy genre of music. Um, it, it really is. Like uh, it's a, a lot of people had problems like in England and America when they started to play it like drummers and stuff it's backwards man really you know what I mean yeah I mean you know like your your whole sense of rhythm in, in America and all like in, in like the West and stuff is just like I, I don't know different like uh, 
I'm trying to think of like how to describe it. Yeah, I know that's probably tough. Like, but that uh, was what I was gonna say. I, like, I just also, guys, you might be going, "Well, this dude's like really good at music and stuff. Like, uh, why can't he talk about that?" I have awful language when it comes to <laughs> like, dude. Like, I'm really bad. Like, I I can read music, but I have to like, you know, yeah. use my finger. Yeah, dude, I'm yeah. really bad. It's all this is all. It's all such a intuitive intuitive thing for, thing for me that I I almost don't even know how to like explain it. One time I asked Jay to explain a song to me and he spent 13 minutes with a uh, synchronized like fireworks display and sparklers. <laughs> and he said that was the closest approximation you could get to it. And yeah, it gets complicated. I don't know how we're going to translate that onto a podcast, but <laughs> you do your best, man. <laughs> man, you know, there's just so much. So here I'll I'll talk about it like this. The Minto music, right? That's mm-hmm. like that came from the church. That's like your hymns and stuff, okay. which is which is bringing tying in the spiritual aspect to it. Um, jazz, you know, huge um, African like African American uh, like genre of music that was that was happening and had been happening, and you know they've got all those records down there. So they you know they're hearing all that stuff uh, as far as like the drums are concerned and blues and R and B, and then. And then Motown, I think, honestly, is the biggest one that really? that hit it. Yeah, dude, like all that stuff is is literally just like island Motown. I I used to think like in my head like it just worked out like some guys like you know down there, and he, like he's got like a like a tiny little radio and he's listening to like the you know the Temptations or something, and because the radio is so terrible, he can't hear the rest of it, and he just starts going you know ching ching you know to it just my imagination <laughs> ching 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 you know like yeah. it just started you know it it just turned into that. And, you know, there's, I mean, almost any Motown's like hit any of those things, even down to John Denver songs, you could look them up, type in reggae after it. Those are reggae version. They were jamming it down there on the islands, man. Funny thing about that too, is one of the few international radio stations that early the Jamaicans could get when radios first became popular was coming from Nashville too. Really? Mm. Yeah. Cause we had one of the first like huge radio towers that could send a signal that far. So I guess just geographically, they happen to be in the right spot to pick up that station. That's so weird. So is there like a country Western influence on that music at all? Or Uh, is that just like a a fun fact that they were getting Nashville radio down there? I mean, like uh, you have to think of country music, I guess, like back in that time, it was, I don't know, more just like gospel and and hymnal almost had that aspect to it. So, you know, like if you look at like, um, what's that song called? Rivers of Babylon, right? Mm-hmm. Like a, it's like a, it's a classic hymn. Uh, there's an American group that did it. I'm not going to pull out my phone and Google it, but there's an American group that did it, country group, uh-huh. um, originally, that I had made it its way down there, and I think that's where the uh, Melodians, you know, like heard it and covered. Yeah. It's also like a really popular hymn, so you know, yeah. that too. But yeah, yeah, as you can hear even from Will, man, like I, uh, I'm still learning like the, the origins of it and, uh, and how it all works and comes together. Really, I have a really good rhythmic understanding of it. I've listened to a lot of it probably for the past four years. It's all I've listened to mm-hmm. consistently every day. I just can't get enough of it, can't find enough of it, and there's a lot of it out there. So um, I can really I can really break down the, the form of it better than I can the historical account of it. That is definitely, like I said, going to be a lifelong journey because right. there's, there's people's names, and as far as I'm concerned, all my credit goes to... Clement Cox and Dodd, the dude that started Studio One, because, man, if not for that guy, oh, my God. In mm. my opinion, I mean, geez, he's everything to me. So Clement Coxton Dodd, Coxon. So that's a C-O-X-O-N-E. Just type in Studio One Reggae, man. You'll get where you need to go, and that's that's, that's it. That's kind of right the heart there. of it all. Yeah, that stuff's good right there, man. So I guess you said you could break the form down of it better, so let's do that maybe. Also, Ben, I'm getting, I'm getting one ear right now. Did something come unplugged over there? It's okay. I'm just hey, there we go. There it was. All so, right. uh, man, uh, we got that track here. Yeah. So let's we before the episode we started kind of piecing some stuff together, just uh, because of some technical limitations we have. It's a little bit easier to to do things that way, um, and we're just kind of gonna run through how we did that. So, well, I didn't do anything. They're gonna run through how they came up with this bit, and I guess it would be cool as you're going to talk about why. You make the choices you do. What about this is making it a reggae track? Do you, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, no, I, got, yeah. I got you. Yeah, definitely. We can do that. Cool. Hey. Mm. That makes me smile. 
you, you, I, you mentioned that a lot when you talk about reggae, that that's like the number one thing with it for you is that it makes, puts a smile on your face. You know, I, I think that's a big thing for a lot of people. I think that's the, the most common uh, thing people feel when they hear this type of music, uh, almost to its detriment sometimes, that they hear it and... Man, I'm just so happy, and of course, most people are going to the beach and island stuff, and yeah, you know, it just brings up, you know. It's uh, also interesting too that pop, they positive can, vibes. There can be sad songs written in this tone that man, that's speak the thing. A that's lot what I was exactly. personally exactly, but it makes you feel some type of way of like has right. had sappy. Had sappy? Yeah, yeah, sad happy man. That's a <laughs> big thing. Sappy. You have to understand that while the music may sound happy. Um, you know, I, I can think of one song, Sugar, Why Not Again, you know. I need a roof over my head. You know, he's singing, and bread it on my table. You know, he just do just wants bread on his table and a roof over his head, well, man, you know. Like you said, it's it's slum music, like it's ghetto music. Yeah, it man. came from a place of struggle. Yeah. And so, like, it's not all beaches and pina coladas. No, like, people want to pretend that it is, I think, a lot of times. So, you know, that, that tied in with it, man, the, the struggle aspect, you know. Don't let the sufferer die, man. Like, you know, rockers, like, rockers suffer. Rockers and reggae and suffering live together in peaceful harmony. Literally, like it's that's how it works. Uh, and you can't let the sufferer die because it's a really, it's a really crucial aspect uh, of humanity. You know, you can't have the good without the bad. You can't have the bad without the good. Uh, obviously, in today's context, you know, when I apply this to my life, there's a a certain aspect that I have rather be, you know, from the outside or the inside that you know I've. I've felt like i've suffered a considerable amount in my own head you know mm -hmm. uh, mental mental health is a very very big topic nowadays and i think it's something that a lot of people are realizing it's just the way we are you know it's, yeah it's the human condition and the realizing of it and we have a we have a lot of things going on in the world today that make you think a lot of different ways and can put you down a lot of different paths uh so that being said you know um the, the the spiritual aspect of reggae music really calmed me down you know that that connection um that you have to god and just the world and the earth and everything like i know it sounds crazy and really heady but it, it it's literally i i can't almost talk about it it just i can feel it it is right like i, I don't know like it's yeah. just it just is i think right. that's something interesting too to to touch on is that like you didn't just start playing reggae music like you also kind of adopted a lifestyle centered around this music and what it means to you and i think that uh that's really interesting i think that that is intrinsic in this music like it's not it's it i don't think it can be separated from that well man you know i I, I don't know like I've, I've I've asked a lot of questions in, in my to myself about like you know reggae music like why is it reggae music and you know I think a large part of it is just my whole life like there's just ways that I felt about things and ways that I've thought about things and I was really trying to figure them out like four years ago really 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 tough part of my life and you know like uh, I I don't know like it, it, I, I can't really explain it like it just I don't know what happened, like, when it happened, I just realized that, like, there's something, and it's not just in reggae music, and that's why I know it's a real thing. It's, you know, when I listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire, when I listen to, you know, the, the Carter family, when I listen to these things that uh, just impact me, not like, oh my god, that's such a great song, or whatever, like, like, something else in me, and I can't explain it, like, is impacted really hard, and... And they're all connected, and with those spans, they're all singing about. It sounds crazy, but they're all, they're it's worship music. They're all singing about God and the light that you can feel, and how like you know, in the light there is no darkness. And you know, if you want the ceiling, you can come and get it because it's been here. And just you know, the power of humanity and love and understanding that can really try to push us to a higher place where we can, you know, it'll never be perfect, but at least where you know everybody can just be because everybody needs the same everything everybody needs shelter everybody needs friends everybody needs love and everybody has the same capacity to understand it i know people aren't brought up the same way and everybody has crazy stuff that happens to them but i mean you know no child is born inherently evil you can mm -hmm. you teach children things you know and and i don't know just the whole looking 
really trying to turn the stone, like Rastafari, like has really helped with that. Really leaving no stone unturned and just seeking knowledge and truth to every aspect of it, and just the, like it, it was, it was enough that, like I said, it's a lifelong journey and it'll never stop. And I, I crave that adventure, and I just saw this adventure that is going to just lead me into the hands of something really powerful and really great and it's an opportunity I can't pass up man like you know absolutely For yeah sure. uh, and, and it really like I said it's just gone hand in hand with kind of how I, I always was and then I just I was like oh wow like these people feel like that too that's yeah. crazy you yeah, know? yeah. Uh, people separated from you by time and space that, yeah. that are experiencing the exact same really things you weirded are. out by that you know and uh you know, it took a lot of self-probing. I mean, uh, you know, I, I didn't grow up in the church, um, but, you know, I, I just, I understand that, yeah, it's what I needed to be doing all along. Otherwise, I couldn't create mm-hmm. what, what, I, what I'm able to create. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just happens. Like, when I sit down and I write lyrics or I do anything else, like, it just happens. Like, I don't sit there and go, oh, what rhymes with time? Like, it, it, I just, it just comes well, out. Well, that's, that's when you know you're doing the right thing. And, and I... Yeah, I play it for my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, my friends, you guys. And everyone's like, yeah, it seems pretty genuine. And I mean, I mean, I'm just going to rock and roll with it, man. Like, you know, like yeah. that love is burning inside of me with a fucking, I, I, I can't even explain. And I got to get that out and I got to show it to people. And if that's a way that I can spread my message and help change things and to help people who are lost and maybe suffering or feeling pain that, dude, you can get out of that. Like, it ain't always going to be roses, but you'll never go back to that again. Yeah. I will never go back to how I was before because I saved. Like, I literally, yeah. like, that salvation washed me absolutely clean. And as long as you keep it up and pay attention to it and make sure that you're, you know, giving thanks like you actually are thankful, then it won't steer you wrong, ever. Ever. That's, that's beautiful, man. And there's always something in that book, man. There is always something in that book. You can crack it open randomly and pick, and it'll it'll help you out. It's not. Give it's it a whirl. Even if you're not a Christian, ladies and gentlemen, it, read it, because that book, a bunch of people came together and and wrote a book that, like, somehow has every aspect of, like, social stuff, and, all, and like, you're like, what? Yeah. Like, right, so just... I, I get people have their ways of looking at things. It's 2019, but you, take a look. Just, just, take, just take a look. <laughs> Try it out. Is Try it your, out. Is that your save that suggestion this week? Yeah, that's my save that suggestion. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Because <laughs> uh, it's great. It's uh, you know, I've read a lot of religious texts because yeah. then you start yeah, to dude. see you start to see the the parts that really shine through the ones that the ones that appear in all of them that like the universal yeah. truths it, that it, shine through yeah, that shit. It, it transcends like. Everything it transcends race, it transcends gender, it transcends everything. It it just is. It is who we are as as a species, as like hum, humans, humanity. Absolutely. You know. So it's it's a it's a crazy thing, man. It touches on everything that I've, you know. You're a kid. You want to do those things. You want to change things. You want to be that guy. And and this is, this is that. I mean, it just it's the right it's the right thing to do. Real quick, I think it'd be good to talk about what Rastafari is. Kind of what that what that term means. I don't think that a lot of people really understand it properly. I think people don't have the best conception of what right. that is and what it means to people. Right. Man, uh, well, Rasta is, it's a social, like a social uh, movement, religious movement, mm-hmm. in, in 1930s Jamaica. Um, it's uh, Abrahamic, you do believe in God. Uh, uh-huh. It's Ja, yeah, every time, you know, Ja, God. Uh, you believe that Ja is in everybody is one of the things that, like I said, that feeling. You uh-huh. know, I was like, that's what that is. Like, you know, and it, it's there. It's in all of us. Like, right. You know, because you know, we all, yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's I in all you. of us. So, uh, you know, you believe in God. Uh, you believe in Ja. Um, Haile Selassie, I, I don't know if I talked about him earlier. Um, his, I think, his birth name his first name is ross rastafar Uh uh-huh um and uh that's where rastafar i rastafarianism you know Mm -hmm. uh he was the emperor of ethiopia between like like the 30s like until like like the mid 70s right um and a lot of people think he's like the like the 
reincarnation or incarnation of God on earth as like the second coming of Christ. So prophet. Right, right. Yeah. Well, no, that's the other thing is like people think he was actually like really Jesus that was back. Right. Um, uh, that then a lot of people just, you know, ref- like because well, he passed away. Uh huh. You know, um, so a lot of people just, you know, regard him as a prophet. Right. You know? Um, like even I myself, like I, you know, regard, regard him as like a prophet. Yeah. Uh, um, it, it's about it, people being oppressed within Western society. Uh, uh, a lot of, a lot of that meaning, you know, the slave diaspora and, you know, just the treatment of Africans, uh, across the board, you mm-hmm. know, uh, in, in, in Western society. I think even in nowadays, it's it's pretty obvious that I, I think I think a lot of those things uh, bleed over to to all of us. It is now a, a human problem, a human struggle, which is why I I'm on board with it and and trying to spread that to fight that because you know it's it's not just a, an African problem or a, a whatever problem. It's it's a it's a human it's a human problem. You yeah, know, and it, it needs all of us to to pay attention to it. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's just, uh, just like I said, just like kind of turning, turning that stone and, and just, there's people that are in charge and there's decisions that are being made. And a lot of us can agree in this room. I mean, we might have differences, but you know, I mean, a lot of us can agree in this room that like something needs to be done, you know, and it's, it's a movement that through the power of the almighty creator and through recognizing humanity's strong suits we can overcome that and and as a unified people do things the right way mm-hmm. you know so that's what that's how i would that's how i would define Rasta. i think that's a great answer thanks man um and i also think it's a pretty good time we can take a break and then we'll come back and really hammer down on this track in the second half and we're also gonna take will's cat out back and Old Yeller her. <laughs> so we'll be right back <laughs> old Yeller her. yeah dog you know how that book ended up See you guys in a sec.
We back. We're back. You guys just heard a, a track from Shay. I don't think we know which one yet, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure it was tasty and delicious because everything he showed me was delicious. Huh? Got it. We got it. Oh, uh, okay. He was giving me hand signals. I didn't know what he wanted. Yeah, sorry. Just trying to speak in hand signals. It like, okay. It was like Dylan was rounding third on his sentence there. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just wanted him to drive it yeah. home. I think so, he was like, hurry it up, dude. Yeah, yeah. shut up, bro. Yeah, come on, bro. Uh, we're going to try... Something a little bit different this episode. We're still kind of working through how to make this thing work the best and how to make it listenable. Uh, So what we're trying this time is we kind of want it to be like a cooking show. Like we made this pan, this, this pancake today. Not a pancake. Those are pretty simple. We made a a nice casserole today. We scrambled some eggs today. (laughs) We made a really nice casserole and we're going to show you how to make the casserole, but it's already kind of done and in the oven. Uh, just waiting for us to pull out later, but we are going to walk you guys through the process a little bit. I think it'll streamline things and make it a little bit neater. Yeah. How's that sound, guys? And then yeah. we're going to metaphorically yeah. take a bite out of it by just playing over it and kind of having fun with it. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get our get our cake and eat it too, baby. Yeah. Is that the saying? Yes. That's all right. Mm, that's all right, so what do you guys want to start with? You want to start with the drums since that's kind of the dominant yeah. force yeah, in yeah, a reggae yeah, track? Yeah, that's yeah. like the soul a little bit. Totally. Um, there are, like I was talking earlier, there's a lot of different genres of it. You got like, you know, rockers, steppers, fucking one drop, <laughs> fucking all other kinds of stuff. Uh, this is go, just. I can go through a couple different rhythms too. Yeah, yeah, here, play, play some. Why don't you play all some? Right, well, this for is us. the one we have. This is the one we're using. The one for the track. The one. Yeah, see that right there? One, three, three. And this is gonna be the one drop. Three, three. One, two, three, four, one, spang. And then, like, you know, sometimes you hit a crash there. Right. Face that one drop. You know, the whole thing is three. What does that mean, one drop? Three. Well, you're dropping the one. Okay. Three. So it's like one, two, three, four. Okay. And then they come back in. You know what I mean? Uh, whereas rock and roll, this kick you're hearing, that would be the snare, right? Yeah. Uh, spang. Uh, spang. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, like, you know. Right, you hear how that's confusing. Yes. So that's your four four B. Right. Three. <laughs> right? So then fills it with the drums are always the kick drum. So you'll hear it here, like you know. Then you can know like you know, and hit yeah. that one drop, and that's that's money right there. That's good. Yeah. Shay, you wanna yeah. go deep? Can we talk about Heartbeat and its relation. Oh to yeah! All right, so check it, check it, check it. So, so like a like like a Rasta drum circle, right? Like in Jamaica, like you have like huge prayer drums, right? And the prayer drums are here, you know, here, yeah, here you go. So they'd be boom, boom, ba da boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba da boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba da boom, boom, ba, boom, boom. And see, even though this is a straight, like you know, one, two. Three, four, one, two, three. It's swing music, uh-huh. right? So you have this. Right? Yeah. So you don't do it the whole time. Each instrument comes in and 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 like creates that felt swing. Right. You know, it's not as simple as like in jazz. You have the same thing here, except you're not doing it, right? So the guitar uh, is like sharp chops, and that's, you know. We have the guitar. Go ahead and add the guitar. So instead of playing both notes, he's just going to play the one. I've always thought of reggae as like. Right there, you see? Swing in a vacuum, you know? Yeah, swing in a vacuum, dude. It's swing with space. So it's swing music, you know? And it's also the traditional. Comes from the heartbeat. Boom. Yeah, and that's your, and that's also right. And that's when you listen to it, when you calm down yeah. your heart. It's meditative. That's the trippiest part of reggae music. Is whenever Shay explains that to me the first time, I can't help but hear my heartbeat in the beat of almost every reggae song I listen to. That's yeah, crazy. Man. So yeah. for me, when you know, when I'm in that place of suffering, right? Yeah, it's just money. Brings you back to the, yeah, the baseline. It's grounding, dude. It's very grounding. And Heavy so you meditation. Said, with the guitar, it chops on the one. That's the that's what you're hearing with reggae guitar. 
Uh, it's just it's just the ends. So okay. The, and 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 okay. And here's but the metronome. Because you have there's all kinds. You have another beat called the. I think it's like what? it's either us or e. So like. Uh, 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 like the one right before it, and I forget what the measurement is because, like I said, I'm really bad with this yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I yeah. should know, but I just know it as you know what it is. Uh huh. But you just take the the one, you know. I got you. And that creates that swing. So then the bass um, is also going to be floating in between the dim 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 dim, and you know. Like that, like kind of three stuff, which is also given that swing, but it's driving in between the straight and the swing, so it kind of creates like an interesting, like you know, like a bridge almost between those two. Yeah, it definitely bridges everything together. But the drums, although crucially important, really what's driving your whole everything is the bass. Here, play it. You're gonna feel this bass is gonna make you start bobbing up and down and really feel the. Yeah, you see, you're smiling. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're right. You, you got that, and it instantly connects it together. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so that right do. there is, you know, the. And I think you and me were talking about that the other day when we were talking about this a little bit. That like when you hear a a, a reggae track mixed, like the drums are always kind of in the back a little bit. Yeah. Like you, the bass is kind of out front. Dude, it's very yeah, bass man. heavy music. Yeah, the the bass like is driving everything, man. Like you know. And how they would record it, right? So you had drums and bass, and the drums and bass would be recorded first, totally separate of everything, right? And that was like you know you had a you had a pool of rhythms, right? Like mm-hmm. just like a pool yeah. of those songs, and you'd bring bands in, like Studio One. That dude wrote all those songs, so all these songs that I love, the studio guy would write them, and people would come and in, and he'd be like, "You can play my song." You know what I That's mean? That's crazy. Yeah. So like a lot of these songs were just like due to recognize this sound and we're just money at recreating it man yeah you know what i mean yeah like, and and that's my whole thing is like studio one like a lot of guys are coming from like like uh i mean these guys came from there too in the early days but like sly and robbie when they started doing like dub you know like yeah. in the 80s like you know well i mean like just effects like okay. i feel like in studio one like they're you're really talking about like basic like recording stuff you know what i mean you've got a hammond you've got a they're all tuning to the room piano yeah and it's humid in there and like you know what i mean it's like a much more organic experience whereas like in the 80s you're starting to get like you know stuff and like you know effects bells and like and whistles yeah bells and whistles you know so you know they started doing all the what you like a what they how they explain is you just take one note and just go crazy with it so like the drums would be like you know and that just creates that like you know yeah like that stop it, like here like here bring the drums out and just hit that and that like spring back you know like it just i don't know something about that just creates like Mm, like it just creates like this moment this build up and then like bring the drums back in <laughs> and it's just you know and it's just it's killer like it's wicked like if yeah. that doesn't get you up and moving like even now like i'm just up and down with it you can't help and it's just yeah it's great it's that's wicked so man you know? i think that when the apocalypse comes and we have to find the foolproof method of you know sussing out the undead walkers amongst us it's we're gonna play reggae and see who dances oh yeah totally that's totally true man i'm not kidding when i'm in the car i wish we had video when i'm in the car dude like the hips just below the seat right i'm just it goes man it makes you wind up dude and if it doesn't there's something wrong with you yeah you know what i mean like everybody can at least agree to that yeah i do you know what i mean it's fucking cool music man yeah it's great i've never been uh exposed to it as much as I would like like my history with reggae music is pretty much Bob Marley and it's something that I would like to to understand a little bit better Bob is great but he's you know man there's so much that happened I mean he's huge he is and you're if you're in Jamaica I mean people are gonna tell you I mean it's he's it's it like it's Bob Marley it's 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 most everybody's favorite singer you know but like that's the thing is like with Rastafari like reggae 
there's also just like Jamaican music, right? Yeah. Which is just also in itself, like there's all this other kind of like, you know, soul man music that's maybe not Rasta because there were people there that weren't down with Rasta. You know, a lot of people in Jamaica looked at it like kind of like a fringe thing. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh man, those guys like growing their hair out and stuff. Like, you know, like they're, 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 they're not clean and they like live out in the jungle and stuff. Like, you know, there was yeah. like a lot of like hate on that, but really like it's not coming from not being cleanliness. It's you're made in his image. So you don't alter your appearance. You let your hair grow to show that love and that appreciation and that connection that you are like connected to the most high the omnipotent he is with you you are him i and i like growing growing it to show like your love and support for that you know what i mean yeah absolutely so uh but yeah it's kind of a fringe thing you know they uh like like a lot of the this is tying it in like the abrahamic stuff like the dietary restrictions right you know like they they don't they eat food out of the ground like you know like i mean like a lot of Ross, like rastas nowadays like especially in america you know they try to eat clean but i mean you know, it's hard nowadays to eat clean, especially in the worst of it all right here, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you can, go grow food, but, you know, otherwise it's pretty hard. But these guys, you know, they're, they're, they're raising chickens, eating, you know, 15 eggs a day and pulling, like, you know, chochos out of the ground and doing all kinds of stuff. Just, it's, you know, it's crazy. Right. Like, just total to natural way of living. Yeah. You know, because the idea of society, you know, like, you can't be outside and just... You know, smoke a cutch and just give thanks and just be and be vibrant and, and just vibe, vibing like with the whole community because it's such a, you know, and especially towns like that, the community is everything. And this music brings people together. It reminds them of their purpose, their spiritual purpose, because no matter how horrible the hell is, you're looking forward to Zion and you know that in Jah's kingdom, like you will have a place and it's going to be so much better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it just keeps you going and it keeps you there and humble and like the, the connection with the music and everything. But the cops didn't dig that. They'd come around and like, you know, turn off the sound system, mash everything up. You know, they didn't, they didn't want it, you know, and, and there's a lot of blowback. I mean, these guys are putting this stuff on the, on the radio and they're like, we don't want people listening to this. You know, there's like a whole kind of blowback there because, you know, people are talking about ganja on, on the on the radio and how, like, you should just, like, don't listen to this and that. And, it, you know, for people that are running the show, they don't like that. Yeah. You know, it challenges that authority. Absolutely. Well, Bob and them used to run up in studios and be like, right. no, you're going to play this track. Like, it right. was a strong arm thing that right. like, totally. get it off the ground a little You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. look at Peter Tosh, dude. Yeah. That guy was intense. Yeah. You know what I mean? He drove a box truck through uh, a huge department store when they opened it in Kingston he drove a box truck through the front it's of it crazy yeah man like you know what I mean like it's like it just anything that was like materialistic and just made people it's okay to want success it's okay to be successful it's okay to have nice things you know what I mean but yeah don't just tear up the land don't just like mess everything up just for the sake of convenience where you're taking away this whole experience the human experience of connection with your food and connection to the land and food that's not growing pesticides and like you know like it just and, it, and it's not just food it's all encompassing your entire being yeah you can be how you are but just understand that you need the same thing as me Realistically, you may want different things than me, Dylan, but we need the same thing. We all need the same thing. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. and and, and th that's why they lived in these communities is because they understood that. You know what I mean? That's why we have the urge to move closer to each other. Right. It's because we understand that community is a very big part. Yeah. You know, together. It's, love. it's yeah. all just love. And that's where people say, you know, one love, all that stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's easy to say one love, but I mean, like, what is that one love? You know, that's your connection to everybody. That's your connection to everything. Because every living thing, like, is, 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 in, the, like, is in it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's there. And, you know, you ha like, we're it. Like, our humans, man. Like, we got the gift. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we can change it for them. We can change it for everybody. Like, uh, we can fix it, literally. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, it's a really, really powerful thing. You know what Absolutely. I mean? And, and if I can, if I can use this music to get to people, like you know, if they're sitting in a bar, you know, having a drink, and maybe they're like, you know, maybe I shouldn't smoke cigarettes or whatever. You know what I mean? That's gonna help you out. You know, because smoking cigarettes is, you know, it's cool if you want to do that. But it, why would you do it? 
be in his image like you know what i mean why would you alter the beautiful set of lungs that you have mm -hmm. you know what i mean like why would you do that why would you mess with such a pristine thing that you're given like, you right know? yeah so yeah that's no the message is definitely a good yeah. one it's a it's yeah. it's a i think it's got a lot all of encompassing to it. Man. yeah all encompassing we got we got off on a tangent again did it's we good. talk about the keys yet on the track no 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 no, no. Let's, We're just let's getting into it, in. man. I'm excited. No, I'm excited. you are. It's fucking great, man. It comes through. The, the, guys, uh, for those of you listening, this is my first time talking about this other than like my, my friends and family. So yeah, I guess because like, that's, that's the music's not out yet. It's something no. you've been working really hard on for a long time. Like three years, man. Only a few people have heard any of it, you yeah. know, and I was blown away when you showed it to me. Thanks, I think man. it's really, really good, and I'm excited for other people to hear it. If you did get a, a snippet, I don't think we talked about that at all, but if you, that snippet that we played on the break, Shay wrote all of it, recorded all the instruments himself, sang himself. It's all Shay. Mixed it all himself as well. So yeah. Yeah, man, trying to do that studio one style, man. Like just, I got, I, I feel like I, you know, like I, I just, I don't know. We probably should have brought that up earlier, but I need to do no, it. That's fine. I it need got to brought do it. up. It got yeah, brought up. No, by the by, hey, by the time this, we this by the time you guys are listening to this, I should have like a whole thing you guys would be able to hear and and uh, we're really I'm really close to releasing uh, a single. Like I, I decided I was gonna release this whole album and I decided, you know, nowadays it's a singles game. I wanna be able to tailor what you guys hear first. <laughs> and uh, you know what I mean? I can really like shape myself as an artist. Um, so <laughs> you know, things like that, you know, because yeah. I'm an artist. Um, <laughs> just so you guys know. Don't forget it. Hashtag no free shows. So, um, <laughs> anyways. It costs money. Yeah, like, anyways. So, um, yeah, like, uh, I, I, I appreciate that, man. I, I, I hate talking about that. But, yeah, dude, I, I do record everything. Mainly it's because of lack of bodies. We got Will over here, though. And, I mean, we've always had Ben. And, I mean, I really hope Aaron as well because he definitely, Aaron's a soul, man. He gets it for sure. Definitely. Aaron's um, a real strong, yeah, strong no, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to, if I may brag on, I'm Will over here. I, I, I think I do have a participating warm body that could add some, some good things to the ensemble. Oh. Uh -huh. So I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, yeah, man, I did it all myself. Uh, I have, I'm lucky enough. My, my father is a, is a really successful uh, producer here in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. We live in Franklin, actually, and yeah. we got a really nice space over there where I can go and create and my dad is my best friend in the whole world and he helps me um at the end like final engineer everything because i can only take it so far um so what you guys will hear i will say is engineered by by my dad you know and i wouldn't be here literally actually <laughs> if it weren't for him um and i actually wouldn't have the gift i did if it weren't for him I, I love him very 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 much he's an awesome guy and i hope he hears this when i say it that's super um, cool that's a family affair man i think that that'll come through in the music too yeah dude you know he's what I'm excited saying? about it and i'm happy that he's excited about it and, and it gives us a chance to hang out which we always which love. is always cool right always, always a plus i'll do some shit i'm not into to hang out with my dad sometimes oh man <laughs> Just the price of growing up. Yeah, yeah you're like, all right, sure, man. We can go walk around at the farm while you throw turkey feed, whatever you yeah, want to do. There man. you like, go. Yeah, do yeah, whatever yeah. you want to do, Why man. Why not, man? But um, yeah, um, so we really wanted to talk about the keys. Yeah, I think just to keep keep our we focus. We went down with the drums and the bass. Let's talk about the keys. Yeah. So the keys, they're also on the chops, right? You're also mm -hmm. doing that swing. Here, will you give me that piano. The... Um, they can do it either just like a, you can either do it like sharp staccato. You can let the notes ring out a little bit, um, or you can do like what the organ's doing. And surprisingly, each each one has a very different effect to the like the timbre of the track. Right. So like uh, here'd be like a longer held out one. So it'd be like more like. Right, which is just classic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if you did a short one with uh, the doubles and more accented, like, you know. Right, you know? Like, yeah. That carries like, kind of a different feel. So what was the third one I said? You got short, you got long. And then... Yeah. What did I say? Staccato. You were talking about staccato. I don't know, guys. Hemp, Oregon. Hemp's legal. We're getting all calm. It's and always I just CBD, can't dude. There's too, so much CBD in the room. I'm just too calm. Ben brought over his <laughs> Tennessee hemp supply, <laughs> bell buckle, body butter. 
Shout out. Shout out. Shout out that body butter, baby. He has his shirt off and it's lathered all over here. Aaron is lathered in CBD. He is so calm. I just got back from hoisting. Hoisting? Right. Hoisting at the gym, and I put on that CBD cream. Were you doing battle ropes? Joints. Were you doing the battle ropes, dude? And I, was doing battle, I was doing battle ropes, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> to reggae music. Yeah, you, you yeah look, dude. Look, you can. Hey, and there, that's yeah, it. Your body, your body your body's the, the temple, man. That's where I got the idea. It's it a goes wave, back right? with it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, the creator, man, he's powerful. You need to be powerful. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're... you're you're, I mean, it's the same thing that we tell people even aside from religion. Even heady kids, they're all like, you're everything, bro. Yeah. I mean, you are. Just do, you are it. Like, you know what I mean? You've one. got it in you. The key is in you. It all depends on how far you're willing to search. Quoting a, uh, a reggae band, Midnight, quoting the Bible. Yeah. Your body is a temple. It is. Your one and only temple. Yes. So, yeah, man, the keys, the keys, you know, they're, they're tying the chops together. The oh, keys I are... remember. It's the organ. So, you know. Yeah, I was gonna say my favorite aspect of reggae is the organ. That one. When the piano. Because that's classic. Played an octave up. Alright, I gotcha. <laughs> Hell yeah. There we go. Hell yeah, dude. But what he's saying is that he's that's the pattern. Yeah, but if you listen to it, like stop playing and just listen to the organ play it. A little bit sharper, more swung, and see how you're representing with even the piano I'm doing here. It's more straight. I played that a little like, straighter. It's just sharp. There's no sustain to the note at all. It's, it's almost it's more of a percussive instrument than it that's is. That's what I was gonna yeah, say. Man, that's what I mean. It's a lot. That's good. This casserole's looking real warm and bubbly, boys. I keep trying to get it right, but it's hard to... It's a tasty-looking casserole you guys have concocted, but it's not ready yet. It needs more. So what's the last element? All right, so you should get like a... Like, here, give me that organ tone, and I'll do like a lead thing. Which would almost be like... You could also do with vocals, right? Yeah, yeah. Similarly. I mean, you know, they they do it with like vocals, like like big sustained, like gospel, like... Yeah, there's a lot of that. It was like five part harmonies. You know? Yeah, you guys got it. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Yeah, so uh, then the uh, the organ, man. So like you would do like a like a melody that kind of just loosely flows around like a, like how about this? All live, all the time, guys. That's super cool. Yeah, you, yeah. Know, you might not want to play the. I mean, you could there, but no, but you know, I maybe maybe messed that up a little bit, but yeah, you know, just like a, you know. Yeah, lead part. Yeah, just like a little, just you know, because like Will said, it's all it's all drums, folks. This is all. You may not have a drum in your hand. But you're playing. So you have a drum in your heart. Drums. You got all a right. drum in your heart. Choose a little lead for this song. I've got a recording right now, so just figure out what you. Let's see. A good little loop. Yeah, no, here I'll, I'll do the one. I'll do the one that we did. I'll, I'll do this one. Yeah, just something chill like that, you know? That's dope, dude. That's all right. Sure. And we, we've got five <laughs> microphones right here. 
Yeah, you want to do some harmonies? Should we really give it a shot and go all out and try and do some vocal harmonies? Do some sweeping, some... Ooh. Yeah, yeah, why not, dude? All right, let's see. You don't trust us? No, here, yeah, no, we, we, we could do it, we could do it. Oh, Maybe we can do it. We shouldn't trust can do it. us. I think it's a, it'd be we a shame even... if we didn't try. Man, we can do some simple ones. That's not a problem. Yeah, exactly. Pushing the envelope here. No, we can do that, man. That's not a problem. Fuck Literally. it. We'll do it live. Literally. <laughs> we'll do it live. I've got, hey, I've got a piano here. All of you have voices. Ah, and you can do it. That's the point. Ah, you know, look, hey, I'd like, I'd like to say right here, it goes back to the community <laughs> thing, man. Yeah. You have to understand that, like, these right, songs. Let's say it's a vocal. These songs that were being sung back then, man, like, they resonated with the community so much that you could go into places where. You know, like maybe there was only one musician. Everybody's singing. You know, I've yeah. seen clips. There's all these crazy clips from these movies back in the day of these guys getting followed around and stuff. And man, just the nightlife, like you know, like in, in, in Jamaica then. Oh my God, like you know, like like all these people. They're like hymns. They literally became like all these like Ruth Reggae songs literally turned into hymns, like for these people. You know what I mean? That's like, cool. That's how do you feel about Brushy One String? Oh, Brushy One String? Yeah. Dude, that guy, that, yeah, that guy's nuts. That, that's, that's awesome stuff. Like, that stuff is really crazy. Like, I, Talk yeah. about simplicity. That guy yeah. plays a, literally plays a guitar with yeah. one string. one string, man. It's nuts. That guy, yeah. That plays, what? That, yeah. that guy plays some cool stuff. Well, that's why, you know, also with the blues, you know, when you listen to blues stuff, if you go over, you know, because reggae is super tied to Ethiopia, you know, like yeah. if you go and listen to old Ethiopian music, man, oh, man, I wish we could pull some of that up right now. You guys would trip uh, because... Like some of the old stuff, I mean, it, it literally is like blues music. Yeah, except really? it's, a, it's if it's you want it's a really good example of it. There's a Northern Mali musician called uh, Bubakar Treor, who is uh, just a phenom guitar player who's yeah, alive man. right now. And his music sound, you can just hear bits of the blues in it. And he even talks about it. he doesn't know how much of it is just comes from Ethiopia and because it's like almost impossible to differentiate these yeah. music. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really because it, all the categories are imperfect constructions around something yeah yeah know? yeah it's crazy it really is it, it and it makes it and it really ties into like when you research it you're like wow it it's it's all connected you feel it literally with it's i don't know when you dig to the bottom of the rabbit hole you realize that it's all one thing well it's and not, that's it's pretty crazy too to think about all the things I, you i think you and i were speaking about this earlier all the things that had to happen for reggae music to exist at all and oh, to yeah. exist the way that oh it my does God. like and all the different things that happened to, had to get the there stuff, crazy. Like he's, even even the guy he's talking about i mean everything the yeah. context of everything is hilarious it's just just ridiculous y'all history is just ridiculous crazy, yeah i don't ridiculous. know if you guys looked it up but Look history, history, yeah, history is pretty crazy. Dude, Google history. Yo, you guys heard about this history thing? Google history. When you That's my home? suggestion for the week. Dibs history. Yeah. Check yeah. out history. Oh, <laughs> man, can we name this song "Squeaky Chair"? Yeah, yeah. Why not? I've been so self-conscious about this chair all day. Yeah, so if you're listening and, and you got a, not even doing it. You got a bunch of money. Maybe you're a patron and you like to just help out podcasters. Send us a nice chair. WD forty even. Because you know, recycle. We could you also don't need just use WD forty. Well, you know we could find mean? a new use for it. Yeah. As I mean, like a living room chair and not yeah, a studio exactly, chair. Exactly. The chair's not going anywhere. Put that chair out the Sweet pasture. The chair's not going in a landfill, damn it. Alright. Oh. That's what I want this song to sound like. Squeaky chair. <laughs> you guys, man. That's bad. Oh, man. All right, tell us what we need to do. All right, so here we're just gonna do that. Uh, this kind of like, uh, like the church thing. So after the chorus, we're not gonna do anything for the chorus. Okay. Just right in the beginning. <laughs> That's so dinky. I love it. <laughs> so when it comes back around at the top. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe this is a bad idea. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, seriously, that context though. Listen, when you listen to that back, that that the Throw texture a lot of reverb that, on that the texture that that no, keep it dry. That's how they did it. The texture that that just I'll turn creates, it down, man. You know what I mean? It's just like that. You it it's fucking community, people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I. That's, Whoa. That's what I, uh, that's what I crave when these things, man. Like, you know, I. I'm happy that I find people that like to play it because, like, you know, it's a hard thing up here to find. 
you know like there's a bunch of different reggae scenes you know you got you got reggae africa reggae australia reggae germany reggae New japan reggae new zealand reggae philippines reggae thailand like what's it's, japanese reggae like man look it up bro probably like you know <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I love it's Japanese a, iterations I mean, of all kinds of music, dude. I love yeah, listening to music. You know, guys, for some reason, I love hearing people sing in Japanese. It's Aaron's cool. going to be upset, but my suggestion for this week, y'all, take a look into Japan. <laughs> look, at, look at what's going on over there. They're doing and some great things. Hot mic. Hot mic. Sorry, y'all. I get a little, I get a little carried away. I laugh. If that was much. hard for you to sit through, I just want you to appreciate the fact that we're really putting our necks out there and trying to sing harmonies in real time. Yeah, man. I mean, come Dude, on. Dude, I think you're way too self-conscious about this shit. Because <laughs> everybody who's not making a podcast and singing at the same time, they're all... They're all, they're all yeah. <laughs> so, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I whoa. can't say that. Dude, it's 2019. <laughs> Sorry, Don't guys. Worry. We'll edit it out. You can bleep it. Oh, yeah. We'll just bleep it. There you go. That'll be nice. <laughs> they won't know what we said. They won't <laughs> know what we said. So it works. I always yeah, like, see, listen... Like, <laughs> right, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, silly, but, like, imagine if you have the different voices and you're all standing around a studio mic in one room, and in the other room you've got bass and drums happening. And you got people that can actually sing. Yeah, dude, yeah. It, it, it creates this whole thing. And then once that track is yeah, made right there, cut that out completely. <laughs> <laughs> what they would do is they'd do the lead vocals first, and a large, a large thing that happens is a call and response. So, like, you know, like, you know... I remember waking up and the sun was looking right. You know, like the, you're gonna, like whatever, like the you know the vocals are gonna answer that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I don't know. It just like I said, it just creates the. It's all layers, man. It creates the good layer. You know, because we could add even in a second. I'll grab that guitar and I'll. I'll do like another like tiny little layer. Like or in, in this finished track, you guys will hear more layers. And really, you, you record these layers and you mix them down really small. And like, you know, even in here, the space, you know, you can add like a just some little things and little parts that all come together and just create this ridiculous fabric. So people listen to it, they think it's the same thing over and over again. But it's not. There's yeah, a ton dude. of texture. And each little rhythm is a completely different, like, like, a, like really complex, like, like pattern. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's all applicable to the. Doom, doom. Here's another one. This yeah. is at, uh, this one's at 114. The one we're playing right now is at 76. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good reggae signature. Oh yeah, see that right there. Here, give me that organ. <laughs> yeah, like that right there. That's a good one. This is like hard bubbles, hard swing. And this right here, this is like, yeah, this is like, you know, you're you're touching some heavy subjects here. You know what I really? mean? Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So like, uh, you know, be right here. Oh, no. oh, hold on. My bad, dude. Okay, no worries, man. Yeah, so, you know, you guys want to do it. It'd be cool. He's going to turn it on. Yeah. We just got to, you know, do stuff yeah. because, you know, we need gear. Yeah. Give yeah, us, so give if you us want money. a more seamless experience, give us money. Come out of your pocket! <laughs> <laughs> Shay did that for free. I'll have you guys know we didn't even yeah. pay him for that. That's not me. That's not me. Or excuse me, no, that is me. That's not them. So you can't be mad at them. Be mad at me because you know, yeah. who cares about me, right? Hey, I'll be mad I at care whoever about I want to be mad at. Hell yeah. Good one, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was hearing. Oh man, never mind. I hit the wrong key. Jeez, <laughs> jeez. Sorry. All right, it's canceled. The whole hey, thing's off. Go to Burn it second. down. Well, that's the point. Hey, the hey hold, on, hold on. I just like to say I can explain about my musical self. This is why it's a problem, right? I hear this beat and I'm like, you know, trying to do reggae stuff. But then the problem with me is that I I come over here and I try to play, you know. Yeah. yeah, I can't. I can't play all that complex stuff over. The jazz I mean, comes yeah, out you know, a little bit. Well, yeah, I always try to put my fingers down the keyboard, and I always end up going weird places. And I, I should just play a try. <laughs> um, While we're doing this, can we do that? Record that second chord part that we were talking about. Yeah, earlier? we can record a B section. Yeah, the C thing. Yeah, yeah I think it'd be fun to kind of put it together beat. too. Yeah, no, but the the slow, the slow song, like, uh, let me try it again. 
Like, you know. Yeah, it does. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> That's such a cool rhythm. That, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be playing the chops. It can just be, you know. If that's not reggae, I don't know what it is. <laughs> and it's not going, you know. You know? Yeah. You don't even have to have that in there. Some songs are just bass. Or it'd be just you. Got it. Anyways, yeah, we got we got a little off. You know what I mean? Like you know. Yeah, it was like, my bad. I was, I was a little bit off there. So I have a song. I have a, I have a song that's really close to this. Actually, that's that's what I. It, it took me a second. I had to think about it, ladies and gentlemen. That's what that is. So if you like that chord progression, be excited for it. Because <laughs> I just like I just like I, I guess I'll just play one of my songs over because it, it works. Yeah, exactly. Which that's a familiar pattern. That, that, I feel like this is what people think of that. You know, they always think of this is like a classic. You know, like kind of yeah. thing. You know, that right, I feel what like about a, lot this of, one? a lot of people. Yeah, here, play another one. I'll demonstrate a few of them. Here's a 102. Okay. Reggae in 102. Beats per minute. Oh yeah, that's a good one right there. This is like this always reminds me of like uh, this always reminds me of like Steel Pulse. Oh, uh, Steel Pulse. Yeah, this is like like, you know, more island. Ding, 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 ding. Like more like like complicated rhythms and a little bit faster, you know, like yeah, more in the presence of the '80s and stuff. Just like, you know, dance here. Yeah, you know, yeah. dance here. Like you know, I shot the sheriff and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, here is this space on? Yeah, yeah, here. This should be. Here, I think I think it's being a like a like a. You gotta turn that on? turn that knob. Let me see, let me see. Crank it. Sorry, folks. Hey, man. This is the hey. price we pay for live entertainment. Yeah. They're used to it. There, there we go. go. So. Oh, no. <laughs> so be it. No. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so sorry. On the spot. Oh, no. You get one more try. Yeah, it is tough. Anyways, yeah, that's horrible. There's a latency. Yeah, oh, there's it's a, so bad. It's a little bit tricky to play some of this stuff. It's hard on. to do it live, folks. Hey, once again, give us more money. Yeah, we need more money. Please. Um. Anyways, so yeah, that's that's only to demonstrate. You like, say, you know, yeah, you'd, you'd play, you'd play. Fast, fast, faster, like you know, more, kind of a more complex, like in the in the '80s, like more, like more complex rhythms, you know, would, would come out. Where instead of just like you know, like you know, boom, 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 and the entire time it'd be like a, you know, you know, just like you know, like you said, more dancey, just you know, just just to get people moving. You yeah. Know? Actually, one of my favorite bands, Third World. Uh, they in the in the latter end of their career, man. Like they're like disco reggae, literally. Really? Yeah, look that up. Uh, what is it? Uh, now that we found us, what are we gonna do? Ja, ja, within. And if that's not like a, you know what I mean? If that's not like a reggae or like a disco song, and it's like you know, you know what I mean? And they're just yeah. like you know. Oh yeah, just like you know, grooving like, and it's like just it, it's wicked because it's reggae music. But yeah, I mean like you know like the end of the seventies. There's a lot of reggae crossovers too. Really? Oh, dude, and when it hit America, like uh, in the UK in the eighties, oh my lord. Yeah. Yeah, like dude, like so much stuff. I mean, you've got, I mean, good God, like what is it? What's that band who that covers the uh, Police in the Streets? The Clash. Yeah, the Clash. They uh, that the, uh, Police in the Streets. You know, that's Junior Mervin. Mm -hmm. Police in the Streets. You know, in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what am I trying to say? 
I can't remember the I can't remember the lyrics of the song. Oh no. Oh no. And then, oh, police and thieves. I'm an idiot. Police and thieves. Right, so Junior's singing about police and thieves, and then the clash comes along, and they're like, you know, police and thieves in the streets. Like, you know, singing the exact same song, and it's a Junior Mervin song, but like, right. like it's like a, like that skunk stuff, you know, Aaron was talking about earlier, like kind of like ska punk music. They, you know, they hopped onto it because there was a large, like, influx of, like, uh, Jamaicans into, into England, and it just meshed up with it, you know, and then like there's like a, oh, you could check that out. There's a whole other subcult. I'm actually one of my favorite reggae bands ever. Um, is they're British, like you know what I mean? Really? Like, yeah, because uh, there was that tie to the island, and man, there's a lot of good stuff that came out of that too. Also, a lot of patois speaking English people, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty funny. You guys should check that out. There's you know the kids were going and they dressed like it and they wanted to talk like it and like be about it. So you know. Somebody, somebody's granddad in England, or you know, and, or, right? You know, you ask him like, "Hey, grandpa, like, what did you used to do?" He'll be like, "Hey, man, let me tell you why. Like, you know, what I mean? like, <laughs> let me tell you what the guan down in here in England. Like, you know what I mean? Like, That's it's so really crazy. funny. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, the uh, yeah, that whole scene, and yeah, my favorite, my little, my favorite band from there, uh, Aswad, which is it means uh, that means black in um, Arabic. Okay, uh, Aswad. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, they're they're from they're from the UK, and they're oh dude they, uh, they all my favorite stuff that I once I started figuring out the musicians that played on all my favorite stuff I was like dude these guys played all that, so yeah. like honestly my interpretation like my love for reggae music was is these dudes like right like they were the studio musicians and they're just some of the man there's they're some of the most renowned musicians in reggae music I mean like some of the most solid tracks because it's it's not easy to like hold that back and play in that. That pocket, you're doing it for five minutes. I mean, you go to another planet. You know, you gotta yeah. be able to control that. You know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of space for you to look around. I mean, you know, that just goes to show like how invested, you know, each individual is. It's such a deep spiritual connection to the music that I, I mean you literally transcend yourself to another place. You know, heavy, heavy meditation. It's awesome. <laughs> it's super cool. Yeah, it's wicked. So there's a there's another cool uh, third world documentary. I forget what it is, but if you just type in, not like third world documentary, you'll probably get some BBC stuff or whatever, but like <laughs> if you type in third world, uh, like a uh, documentary reggae, like on YouTube or something, it'll come up. It's like an hour long. You'll, 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 you'll see it when you see it. Um, and I think about halfway through, it shows them jamming in their yard and like up in the hills, like overlooking Kingston. Oh man, it's nuts. They got all their tour gear out in the yard and it's just in the sunshine. And they're, it's my dream, my dream literally to be with a band of my friends and it's like hot as hell outside and we're outside with our instruments and they're just giving it hell. It's awesome. That's super yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really cool, man. It's like, you know, like seeing images like that and just knowing how I feel and knowing how they feel, it was like, I have got to do this. Like, I've got to do it. So yeah, it's there's some really cool stuff in there for I'll sure. definitely check that out. But yeah, man, this track though, uh, I got... <laughs> Like, what else is it? Is it? Is it that, done? Yeah, that's it, pretty much. You yeah. know, it's, it's like, simple stuff, right? It's, it, it is simple, but it, you know, the little, the I little think, things are count. I think as a mean? whole, time. it's simple from when you're just listening to it from an outsider perspective. Yeah. Right. Each individual aspect is so insanely complicated. Yeah. yeah. That brings it together. To it kind of offsets it in a strange way it offsets the co complexity of each individual yeah. instrument to combine as a whole to create something that sounds relatable to everyone. Yeah. yeah totally. Jeez. And that, that yeah. can translate to anything, dude. Literally, think about, like, just bluegrass or just, like, Joey, when he was here, it's, like, it sounds simple to most people, but when you get behind the technique, like, growing mm. your fingernails out and shit... There's like a lot of different things that <laughs> involve <laughs> complexity to an individual instrument. Yeah. So, I also want to say we said this track is done. None of the tracks that we've done on the show have really been completely finished, and there's always something you can add. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And to, like to perfect a song would take us. I mean, weeks. dude, I've been working on this batch of songs that I have for like three and a half years. Right. So that's why I decided to go to singles, man. You know the mad the madness of trying to get an album together. Yeah. Dude, I can focus on one single and pump it out and like it's great. And then like each time I wanna put out a song, I can just like hunker down on that one single. I've got like twenty three of them. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, think about how much content that is, right? As opposed yep. to me releasing all 23 and then you guys fucking hate it and then my life is ruined! <laughs> well, when, you and me were talking about this the other day and I hate... I hate the, like, singles thing. I'm not into... It's just the, how it is now, man. Exactly. I understand the reality of it, that they, that's what most people want to listen to, but it bums me out because I love an album. But it is it's the way people listen to music now. Is they're playlisting. Just like, huh? That's all it is, playlisting. Yeah. Songs that match the vibe of another song. And yeah. then you just keep going from that. And you're like, ooh, I'm in the mood for this. Right. And then you just cycle through a bunch of different artists. That's exactly. Like, ooh, I like that. Ooh, yeah. I like that. People are oh. instant gratification. <laughs> yeah. And in the hip hop world, yeah. dude, do, oh my God, I'm not even going to talk about this. You guys might not know or not know. Some of our listeners might know. But like that 6 9 kid, right? Trayway, yeah. dude. Oh my God. He has 10 songs, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? He's got 10. That's it. That's all he ever has. Right. You know how many fucking songs Bob Marley has? Yeah, no, I don't. I'm sure it's astronomical. Dude, though. and the ones that he didn't even record. And, like, everybody. Like, you know what I mean? I've got songs that I'll never record that are just for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so many songs. And, I mean, I know rappers work on a lot of stuff. That's not to say rappers don't work on a lot of stuff. Because, I mean, dude, I mean, you know, those those dudes fill up bars notes. for days. Bars for days, dog. Hey, right, you catch me in the six, street. Six Nine didn't come out bars. with a, a rainbow-themed, like, concept album. No, that's no, what I mean. No, he just put out singles about, like, yeah. standing on the top of a Rari or whatever the fuck that kid talks about. I, yeah, ne- I don't guess think what I've he's ever talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Life in prison, baby. <laughs> Because you you play fucking stupid games, you win stupid prizes, yeah. dude. It's not that hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, you how stupid this is. I'm I'm sorry, y'all, but literally, for those of you that are listening to this and you were like, oh, I used to listen to Cooter or whatever. I like that song, Stupid. Children listen to that. Okay? Yeah. Bobby Shmurda, right? You guys thought he was bad. He only got like 20-something years. This dude's facing 47. He's got like nine fel- like federal like racket. All this... Dude, fentanyl, guys. He was trafficking fentanyl. If that's not a grade A piece of shit, I, yeah. I have no idea yeah. what is. Anyways, yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> anyway. It's a platform, and I feel strongly about that. No, I feel no. you. I was, Censor what you're listening I think we to got there Come because on. I was saying that like I'm lamenting the fact that people aren't putting out albums. I don't right. know. I get why, and it makes sense if you're distributing to put stuff out that way, but I really... I, I like an album. The I like Sturgill Simpson a lot. And when he put out, I may have talked about this before, I hope not. When he put out his last album, uh, Sailor's Guide to Earth, he tried to figure out how to, like he was trying to figure out how he could put it out without tracks. Like he just wanted to put out this like hour and 15 long album because he felt so strongly that it should be listened to in right. that order, like right. he w- he was like, I wasn't gonna do songs. They made me. Like the, right. he was forced to do it exactly. for distribution purposes. Right. Of course. He just wanted to put out that big long piece of music, and I think that would have been way cooler. Of course. If yeah. I mean, that's that. great. Like but that's, that's awesome. That I love it. I mean, like. So dude. what we're saying is that we wish Six Nine had done a concept album. Yes. Yeah, I would probably man. had a little bit more respect for him if he did. What would his concept album be about? What's a Six Nine? Well, every not, we don't. I don't know if we need to go down. Yeah, we don't need to go down the rabbit hole. What happened? We need another. I'm just saying. No, no. Why are you scared? I'm in. The conversation, I just think it would take us another hour at least. Okay, that's yeah, right. I could, yeah. I could rip what, on that guys, kid. Are we, are we in wrap it up territory here? I, think I don't so. know. I, are, Aaron, yeah. Aaron thinks so. Yeah, you know what? I think we are. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm being assertive. Wait, there's one thing we need to do. Oh. Aaron has this this measuring cup that you can adjust. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it makes this sound, and we were going to sample it, and we never did it. We're so going to put it in the that. song. All right. so. Come on. Be you a sport. Call. Thanks. Good job, Will. Be a sport, Ben. It's one of those measuring it. cups for the people at home. I am a sport, dude. They put mayonnaise in. You are a sport. I'm you can, a sport. You can plop it out. <laughs> I'm the only you, sport. You, go, you can, like, plop it. Here, let's... I like the building... Whoa. Double, double, double. I like... Whoa. I like... <laughs> Uh, uh, can you mute the mics where, where it's only Aaron's mic? mic? Welcome, Welcome valued, valued customer. customer. <laughs> Hey, yeah. The wireless customer you have called is currently out of service. Goodbye. Can we get one more of those? Check. Hello. Yo. Aaron, <laughs> the cup, dude. The, the cup. cup. <laughs> I'm even talking. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right, this is the Aaron show. You're live. That's what he always wanted. I feel powerful. <laughs> okay, we we'll shut up. <laughs> all right, all right, hold on. I need another one, but further away. All right, further away. Take, Take two. two. I think the first one's better. Closer. Let's do a middle ground. I 
I think that was the one, boys. <laughs> we got it, guys. Crispy takes. Yo, 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 yo. So I have an idea, and maybe our listeners or y'all's listeners, not mine. I'm just always inclined to do that because I'm, I'm still not fan. convinced that we have any, but uh, uh, we anyways, keep getting the plays. Yo, so I think a good idea for this episode would be I'll get like a uh, before this this before this puppy comes out. There's a super easy. I can go on YouTube, get like a a five. <laughs> six track thing that like will cover like each little like they'll it'll, they'll be spaced apart like uh in the in the timeline but i'll give you guys some solid tracks you guys can listen to along with, maybe with the track just like a link or something yeah that we that, can put up when we put up the episode yeah, like here's know, a little playlist of yeah, shit we like think rockers, we should go. steppers dub like all that stuff just to give you guys a little like rundown of it man that's you know? an awesome idea and some of my favorite songs so they're great you guys should listen to it and hopefully it'll start your rabbit hole journey and you guys can like look at all that stuff because it's it's pretty amazing. I would love that. Let's definitely do that. Maybe for your suggestion today, just name, give us like a, a couple. I can give. Yeah, I can do that too. Yeah, definitely. You can do both. Somewhere, do something to get them started. Yeah. I'm just because we know they're gonna run and fire up that computer right now, because they go look at everything we suggest. You better. Oh yeah. We got loyal fans. God forbid we see you in person. <laughs> don't talk. Don't, I'm not taking pictures. <laughs> um. Anybody have any suggestions this week? You guys ready? Will I know oh, you I'm always ready. have one. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> ben is so ready. <laughs> All right, Ben, let's get it out I'm of the ben way. I'm ready, dude. My eyes still hurt. Let's get it out of the way. <laughs> oh, no. Do you need, like, an air <laughs> horn or dramatic music? Big team in that. <laughs> <laughs> Drop my voice really low. <laughs> I got to remember which one it is. I think it's... <laughs> Try that. Hello. Oh, my eyes still hurt. Hello. Maybe not. Well, my suggestion this week is Apex Legends. Ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> the new VR. So it's kind of, it's, I mean, I'm not a, it's not a proud suggestion, but <laughs> it is actually a good game. It's a good game if you're into gaming. You can win it! it! <laughs> Tell them what it is. I mean, like, uh, so, go ahead and air your grievances. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to lay lay my cards on the table. It's this and let gamer, know. gamer, gamer's circle with Ben, real quick, on the suggestion tip. Jesus, dude. Yeah, um, it's a good place. It's a, podcasting is kind of like therapy. It's like you know what? I'm gonna be honest with myself. When I put it on the internet, you can't tell a lie. Yeah, and you if can. you do, then you're a fraud. Exactly. You hear that, frauds? This is honesty at its best. Right it here. is long form conversation. Because so you, honestly. Apex Legends is a great battle royale first person shooter and there's a lot of tactic involved to the point where we have played for several hours and have yet to win a game because we suck so much dick at this fucking game but it's so aggravating because it's like we've gotten second place so many times and we're almost there and we just die. And it's so difficult. It's fucking embarrassing, is what it's it is. It's fucking embarrassing. No, dude, it's a really hard game. Like <laughs> but Fortnite, but it is a, like y'all think Fortnite is hard? <laughs> nah. Cause. If you thought Fortnite was hard, <laughs> Apex Legends <laughs> coming. Seriously, this game is not for twelve-year-olds. It is not. It is not, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, it is. My eyes hurt. And not a, dude, don't be coy, not a few hours. We're talking <laughs> like... I didn't say a few, I said several. More than several, like... I think, no, they need context. I got here today, I got to Murfreesboro that's, that's at day, like dude. two or three maybe. Not even, the, like, I think it was like two. And we didn't get started until eight because they were just like junkies, man. One more fucking game, one more game, I'm gonna get them. And they couldn't get it. I'm not proud. Like I said, but it did look fun. I'll it give is you that. a fun game, damn it! And I'm sorry if you become addicted to it because of my suggestion. It's this free. Week. I don't know if we but, mentioned that. Oh it's yeah, a free it's free. It is a free game. Fucking yeah. yeah. First taste always free. All you pushers, all platforms, dude. all platforms. Find us on, baby. Find us on, on PlayStation if you're if you're on. The, yeah, please. Is it on the on Switch? PlayStation. No. Then don't be running around saying all platforms, you racist. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we gotta play Smash. Sorry. Is it on the Switch? It's like, no. Sorry about it, Pikachu. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Go back to your cute game yeah, system. Yeah, if you're playing fucking, like, Pokemon, you don't need to be in Apex anyway! Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm never going to play it, but it does It does look good. It looks fun, guys. Are you good? Um, get it all out? Catch them all down. Also, for a serious one, check out Martin Cash Art on Instagram. He has some cool art, and it's worth looking at. Yeah, absolutely. It'll blow your mind off. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Aaron, I know you got some goodies. Always, dude. <laughs> um, 
So, for serious, this is one of my favorite songs of all time by the great Pat Kelly. Mm. It's a good day. Yep. It's one of the most positive songs that might have ever been written. Yep. Uh, like, I, I can't even... You have to listen to it. Just listen to it's it. It's beautiful. The yeah. guitar chop, like, the... Uh, it gives me tingles every time I hear it. I never get tired of it. Yeah, uh, and that whole album, folks, Jamaican Soul, Pat Kelly, front to back, you'll weep. Yeah. <laughs> you'll weep. You'll weep. You know, that's what I leave you with. <laughs> Speechless. You'll weep. You'll, you'll be. <laughs> you'll be. <laughs> you'll be. <laughs> you'll weep. Just be. Oh, wait. Hey, where did that... Uh, is, this, is this pink one the... Yeah. It probably sounds crazy when you talk about the push if like someone's never is seen this, a push. Is, is the pink one the drum? Okay. <laughs> is this pink audio file right here Aaron's uh cup? Yes. Number 17? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to convert. Hold on. Are we are you was that it, Aaron? Is it my turn? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. I was just checking. I only do one suggestion. Okay. Yeah, because you're not greedy. Yep, that's right. Not, uh, you, you know, for the people, man. Over makes here. me feel morally superior to all of you guys. <laughs> I just have one. I uh, sit here and go, I only have one. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> just one. Not two. Aaron likes to go to businesses and ask for the manager for no reason. Like, he's, <laughs> before he ever even orders anything, Aaron goes into restaurants and he's just like, I need to speak to a manager. About what? Just get the manager. <laughs> That's the kind of person you are. He's wearing a headband, guys. And no shirt. <laughs> no shirt. Uh, this is our second shirtless Aaron His episode. nipples got hard, dude. I'm sorry. I got off, off topic there. Look so, at Look at It's cold. It did get chilly. Uh, I rec- I'm a sucker for a good documentary, and I recently watched one on HBO. It is called Breslin and Hamill. And it's about two of these... Uh, they're, they were columnists in New York... And it's obviously it's a good HBO documentary, so it's also just kind of about them and their lives. But they were some of the first people to bring liter- literary techniques to newspaper writing. They were also like old school reporters. You know, these guys didn't go to college; they like went to high school, and then they chased news around everywhere and wrote about it. And wow. uh, it, it was really interesting. It was a really revolutionary time in in journalism, and they're really interesting dudes who wrote about some really heavy moments in history. So it's definitely worth checking out. It's a really well done documentary. It's on HBO. That's called Breslin and Hamill. Check it out. I'm going to hate it when I listen back to what I just said. That Check it out. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, that, I'm going to ask Will later to isolate that and send it to me to make it my ringtone. <laughs> I, want it my, I want it to be my text tone. Yeah. Check hey, it out. Check it out. <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. We can actually make that happen. Yeah, I'm down. Oh, he will. I'm, dude, I'll we should it. sell ringtones of Dylan he doesn't like. Dude. Yeah. Look on the website y'all make right so now. so much money, dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. People will just be chomping at the bit to buy those. Yeah, dude. <laughs> My oh. sultry tones. <laughs> yeah. Sultry. <laughs> Dylan, you got a lot of confidence in your voice. So I don't. You'll like, so, make so much money. <laughs> so, I just, you know, hey, more yes and, Will. You're right. I'm sorry. Less no but. More less and. Ah, oh, shit. You Is got it my turn? Yeah, go. Yeah, we yeah, got. Have I talked about the Blue Planet post-animal combination yet on the podcast? <laughs> Probably, but it's okay. Have I? Uh, I don't, don't want to repeat myself. I will keep tabs on your suggestions. All right. Well, if I've done this before, then I'm sorry. But my suggestion is to watch Blue Planet, either one or two. Doesn't matter. <laughs> because they're pretty much the same movie. Right. You get the point. Yeah. But And uh, turn off the audio. Listen to the band called Post Animals album titled Post Animal Perform the Most Curious Water Activities. Did they design it? For that? No way. Okay. But it's it just, just goes perfectly. <laughs> it's great. And it's a good way to like if you put it on in the background and you know clean your apartment or something like that. Yeah. If you're just listening to music, it has a nice uh visual component added it's on. Pleasing for your eyeballs. And it works perfectly. I don't know how they do it. It's something along the lines of like the what movie is it with Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon and Red, Red uh, Planet? Uh, Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz, yeah. Something along There's those a lines. Couple of them. Something along those lines. Well, cool. Yeah, that's always a fun thing to do. I love turning off audio on shows. Yeah, I, don't know I like I'm listening to music with this cadence. But I also like watching TV. Falling apart right at the end. <laughs> you really just boiled it all down, didn't you? <laughs> Next Woo. week. We'll talk <laughs> Next about... time I say that, we'll talk about other albums we like to listen to with documentaries on mute. 
Yeah. Works great with cartoons hey, and man, hip hop. There's a market for that. Yeah, there is. Our favorite albums and our favorite documentaries. Cartoons and cartoons and hip hop beats. That shit's tight. Lots of those. Okay. I think we've done enough. Yeah. Burn. <laughs> I uh, have a suggestion. Yeah. What you got for us? Yo, so uh, like I said earlier, Third World, they're great. They're a really big influence. Uh, definitely a later influence, but like definitely a really huge foundation in like my sound. And uh, yeah, Third World, they're, um, they're a self-titled album, Third World, man. Uh, it's uh, 1976. It's, it starts off with like a reggae classic, uh, Sata Masaganya. And uh, the, what I was talking about earlier about like the hymns, that was like a huge one, man. Like everybody sang it, and uh, they got it. And they also have another good cover on there, and it's just a great album altogether. Really talented musicians from Jamaica, and uh, still to this day are responsible for producing a lot of the popular acts out of there. Really? Yeah, those guys are like plugged in now. They're 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 it. So um, yeah, check it out. Third World, self-titled uh, album. Third World. It's green. Uh, pretty interesting artwork. You'll see it. So, cool. I'm gonna check that out on the way home. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Well, Shay, we yes. appreciate you, bud. Thanks for coming to do this. You, I appreciate you being here. Thank you all for listening to my rambling. Dude, it was so, it was so fun. Um, a lot of fun insights. Yeah, it's good. And I, y'all, if you're listening to this, any new people are listening to it, you know, please bear with me. It's the first time I am setting it out of the table. So, uh, yeah, you know, just, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there, and that means you should do. Because how we all are here being honest with each other, that's how we should all be with each other. All the time, because All it ties time. in with everything. It'll help it out. Just do the right thing. It's also my single coming out. A little shameless self promotion. It's called "Just Do the Right Thing," folks, because that's all you got to do. You know what it is. If you do something wrong, did you know you weren't supposed to do it? You did. So why are you doing it? You know, <laughs> do the right thing. You have the answer. Indeed. You Thanks, Jay. It. Yeah, no problem. On be good, note. guys. We love you. Here. Like and subscribe. Turned it away better. Yo, yeah, yeah, like and subscribe to all of our shit and all of Shay's stuff. We'll put links for you to do that. It's coming out soon, guys. Validate us, validate us, validate us. Please. Ooh, that was a sharp one. Fuck. Let's go get a win in Apex Legends. You guys are monsters. All right, listen.